if you have your Bible let's go together with me to Matthew chapter 25 and verse 29 for to everyone who has more will be given and he will have abundance but from him who does not have even what he has will be taken away this same exact verse was mentioned in Matthew chapter 13 after Jesus explained the parable of the sower the seed and the soil and he explained the parable came to his disciples and said you guys knew me or know me as the Lord and the Messiah now I'm giving you the secrets of the kingdom and disciples were like well Jesus we already know your God go to the people and explain them the secrets and Jesus says this he who has more will be given and he has a, and he will have abundance he who doesn't have even what he thinks to have or he has physically will be taken away now this Bernie Sanders will not like this verse I'm <laughs> just for once in the politics this is brutal talk about helping the needy Jesus says you don't have it I'll take what you think to have away you're like wow and he says if you have it more will be given to you all and on the top of that you'll get abundance I accept in Jesus name <laughs> we read the verse we read the parable I want to explain to you today about principle of faith from this verse it's a very painful principle but it works all the time the king gives a five talents to one guy he gives less talents to another guy and he gave one talent to last guy talent is a measure of weight it's a weight talent is not like a gift to sing or to perform talent here is it's, it's, the, it's a weight it's like we use ounces or pounds it's it's a weight so probably a certain amount of gold certain or silver or, or precious stones but he gave them certain weight of things to one guy second guy and the third guy and each two guys went in invested things one guy came in and he buried it and he they all came back he rewarded them he says great job and the guy who came with one thing he didn't do anything with it the king takes away that one talent and he does something very offensive he gives it to the guy who has the most talents and you're like you only gave him one talent that's already an insult because you don't give everyone equally and now he didn't do anything with it you're taking that one thing away from him and you're giving to the guy with 10 talents he already has enough and the king said this he said to him who has more will be given and he will have abundance to him who doesn't have in here inside he said what he has in there on the outside will be taken away and he will be completely bankrupt on the outside because he's already been bankrupt on the inside the big idea of this message this morning is this the state of your mind is more important than the condition of your life the state of your mind is more important than the condition in your body the state of your mind your inner world is more important than the digits in your bank account than the degrees on your wall than the family you're coming from your inner world is a magnet if you have nothing here you attract more of nothing until you get abundance of nothing if you have something here an attitude of faith an attitude of positive outlook in the middle of negative situations what happens is that you begin to have more given to you of that and then you have even more abundance so the secret is not to change my circumstances the secret is to connect with God's Word and God's Spirit to change the attitude and the atmosphere in my inner world in my mind can somebody shout amen. amen Bible says our life is transformed by the renewing of our mind means our life is a result of the state of our mind that's Apostle Paul says Romans chapter 12 verse 2 
It's not the other way around. The Bible doesn't say your mind is changed when your life is changed. It says your life is changed when your mind is changed. Your mind gets changed by the Holy Spirit and the Holy Scriptures. Can somebody say amen? I didn't hear you. Can somebody shout amen? But for many of us, what's been changing our mind is our circumstances. When it's our mind that's supposed to be changing the circumstances. And our mind is supposed to be under influence of a greater reality called the Holy Spirit and the Holy Scriptures. Can somebody shout Amen. You know there was this interesting story I heard I uh, saw a clip once of this comedian Jim Carrey where in 1985 1987 I'm sorry he was homeless he had nothing going for him and he took a blank check a blank check he had no money in his account and a blank check he wrote a check to himself for 10 million dollars and he dated 1985 19, 1995 I'm sorry 1995 he wrote a check for 10 million million dollars signed it and put his name there that he's giving a check to himself he will get in 1995 a check for 10 million dollars homeless has nowhere to live has no money whatsoever somehow he gets auditioned for this movie that many of you have rewatched and quoted like the holy written scriptures dumb and dumber number one and his personality fits into that movie perfectly and it's interesting that out of that movie he receives a royalty check in 1994 so a year before his faith check was written for exactly 10 million dollars so what you have here you begin to attract more of that and then you get abundance of it and when you don't have it here the Bible says even what you have in there gets taken away if your mind is sick and your body gets healed the healing cannot last through the test of time because the, the mind that is sick cannot contain the body that is not sick the greatest problem is not with the sickness in the body it's not even with the sickness in the bones it's when sickness creeps in and begins to be sick in your mind that even when you don't have a sickness you're looking for one have you ever done it you're like something must be wrong you woke up you just didn't sleep on the right side it's my neck that's it i need to go see a chiropractor that you just need to turn it back and forth three times and everything will be fine but when you are sick in your mind, you're expecting, you're worried that you're not sick. Because you have to be sick. It's your destiny to be sick. It's your calling to be sick. When you are poor here, you're constantly waiting for somebody to give you something. Tax this season is the Jehovah Jireh in your life. Because there is only one way God can bless me. And that is if I get a $150 refund. It's, it's, it's the poverty here and somebody gives you a thousand dollars and you see within two weeks it's gone. Where? It's gone. Why? Because a poor person here will always be a poor person here and there and have abundance of what is here.